I'm John Clothier and today with the House of Resin I'm going to show you how you can get into stabilising your own wood. So to begin let's have a look at all the equipment that we've got shall we? Well the first thing I've got here and this is probably the most important is this is the piece of wood that I want to stabilise. Now what you want to make sure is that this is very very dry. Ideally this needs to have a moisture content of 0%. If your wood is wetter than that you can put it in a toaster oven or in your oven at home and dry it down a bit. Instructions about how best to do that are included in the leaflet. One of the things you can use to test that is a moisture meter, like this one here. So having decided that we're going to stabilize this piece of wood, let's have a little talk about the basic process that we need to go through and then we can look at the other equipment that we need to achieve that. The first thing we want to do is remove all of the air from this wood. And the way that we do that is with a vacuum pump. And I've got a vacuum pump just here. What we then do is we replace all of the air that's inside this wood with cactus juice, stabilizing resin. And that's what we've got here. So what we have to do is we have to submerge the wood in the cactus juice. And we do that in the chamber. And here we've got the cactus juice stabilizing chamber from 10x which is also available with all of these products from House of Resin. What we can then do is we place this in the stabilizing solution inside the chamber and then using the vacuum pump we will draw all of the air outside of this wood. When we then release the vacuum the stabilizing resin will then go into the wood and permeate into all of the different pores and grain holes and voids that are in within this piece of wood. Having then done that, what we then want to do is we want to wrap this up in kitchen foil and put it in our toaster oven. This particular resin cures and goes hard when you apply heat. And it needs a fairly particular heat, but we'll come on to that later. Now this particular chamber has been designed to work with stabilizing resin. You can get other chambers, um, but often they're the type with the acrylic lid at the top. The acrylic lid with those can sometimes react with the resin and it's therefore recommended to use this as it has been specifically designed to work. When you get the chamber, you get the instruction booklet and everything I'm going to go through with you today is included in this. We have the lid, very basic, very standard. There's no, there's no locks or bolts or anything that holds it down. The vacuum itself will just hold the lid in place so it makes it very easy to use. At the top, we have a gauge that lets us to see what pressure we're getting down to, what vacuum pressure, which is negative pressure in a way. We have our pipe, which goes off and connects onto our vacuum pump. And we have a bleed valve, and that's for allowing air in when we want to release the pressure, and also to control the bubbles, which we'll see later. Also to note that when you first get one of these, you'll see that there's this remove pin before use label on the top. We must make sure we remove that and remove the pin there. That just enables the gauge to work properly. I would also recommend when purchasing one of these to purchase the bench ring. Now what this is for is you screw this down to your bench or in my case, I've got a piece of heavy duty plywood. And then what you can do is you can take the chamber and screw it down into it. Because these are tall and quite narrow, they may have a tendency to fall over or be knocked over. What this will do is it'll allow you to hold it down, screw it to the bench, it's not going anywhere. Or a big chunky piece of plywood, it's not gonna move. So onto the stabilizing resin itself. When you first start out, you might be tempted to buy the, the one liter bottle. And this is a good option. This gives you plenty of resin and the resin is reusable. Once you put through this process, you can put it back in the bottle and use it again and again and again until you need more, which is great news. It's also available in bigger sizes. Now this is a 1.9 litre, um, it's a half a gallon. With the bigger sizes, you will also get a separate bottle that contains an activator. When the activator has been placed and thoroughly mixed in the stabilising resin, you have about 12 months of shelf life before it will start to go bad. What I do is I write the date on the bottle of when I've mixed it in, and that way I can always remember. When you buy the smaller bottle, you'll see that there is a sticker on the top that tells you it's ready to use. So you don't have to worry about any of that. 
and this is what we're going to be using today. So what else have we got? Well, we want gloves. You don't really want to be getting a stabilizer and resin on your hand, and if you're using dyes especially, nice pair of rubber gloves just to kind of keep your hands safe. I'm also wearing my smock, and that's just so that I don't get any splashes on me or anything else that might cause me to ruin my clothing. We're going to need aluminium foil, and optionally, you might want to add some of the colours. Now, I've got a range of aluminite colours here. There's also a range that are made by the same company, Turntex. The aluminite colours and the Turntex colours are both absolutely fine to add to the resin. Of course, once you've added colour to this resin, it's permanently coloured, so you can't take the colour out of it. So if you're going to go down that route, you might want to just decanter some of this into another vessel. If you're going to do that, please make sure you don't put it in a glass jar because it can cause a problem with the resin. Okay, let's set everything up. Right, I've cleared down uh, my area and I've got rid of everything that I don't need. So what I want to do now is I'm going to connect this to the vacuum pump. And one thing I did forget to mention just now was you're also going to need a toaster oven. Your oven needs to be able to go to 90 degrees centigrade. You also want to get yourself a oven thermometer so you can keep an eye on the temperature. The temperature is really quite critical with this and you don't want it getting it too hot because it will cause all the resin to leak out of the wood and you don't want it to be too cool or it won't cure. I would recommend to get a dedicated toaster oven for this. They are very inexpensive. Uh, this one alone, I think this was about 20 pounds. You don't want to use your home oven because some of the fumes that can come off of it may cause you a problem with your food and it can tie your oven up for quite some time. Anyway, let's get this connected to the pump. So I've got my vacuum pump just here and I've got a connector and with the standard fitting, it just screws on. Of course, you want to make sure it's tight. Finger tight is absolutely fine. Um, you don't need to put a spanner onto it, but you do want to try and make sure that there's no leaks there. So I'm just going to put that to one side. Then we have the chamber. So I've got my ring screwed to my piece of wood. So let's just place that inside the ring and turn it. And as you can see now, that is incredibly solid. That's not going to go anywhere. And now what we want to do is just give it a little dry run. Just make sure that everything's going to work. So I'm going to switch on the vacuum pump. Now the vacuum pumps can be a little noisy. I've got my valve closed. So what I'm going to do now is just lightly press down on the top. And that just causes it to seal. And you can see the needle is absolutely shooting up. Okay, so I know that that's working. As you can see, the lid's not coming off. What I'm going to do now is release the pressure. And once it's returned to zero, you can turn your pump off. You don't want to turn your pump off while it's under vacuum because that will cause you problems with your pump. And also some of the oil that's in there may come back up and into the system. You don't want that. Okay, so right, we know that that's all working. We know we've got a good seal. So let's put that to one side. Inside the chamber, we've got this block. And this is a special block that what it's for is you push it down inside and you wedge it and it will stop any wood from floating back up outside of the resin. So now we're ready for our next step. So I've got my wood, I've got my chamber, and I've got my resin. I've also got my gloves on now, because it's gonna get a bit messy. I use the nitrile gloves because they're powder free, which means you don't have powder coming off onto things. And they're also a lot nicer on your hands. Very cheap as well. So we're gonna take our wood, and we're gonna put it in the chamber pot. Now, it doesn't matter if it's at a funny angle, none of that matters. And we take our block, make sure it's wedged in place to stop the wood from floating up. Take our resin, and all we need to do is pour it in the chamber. Now as you can see, I've gone about an inch over the top of the wood with the resin. You want to try and do that so that when the resin drops down, there's you know, obviously when it's sucked into the wood, you don't suddenly expose the wood to the air. Now these chambers are also available in different sizes. This is the six inches diameter and it goes up to from 12 inches up to I think it's 16. There's also a four inch diameter 
that's also shorter and obviously they have some tall ones as well. Depending on the kind of blanks that you're, or wood that you're going to stabilise, you might want to look at which one is going to be most suitable for you. Now what I'm going to do is put the lid back on, make sure it's centred correctly. The process is, we switch the pump on and we watch as all of the air bubbles come rushing out of the wood. Now this is likely to cause the resin to foam and it's likely to go up the chamber. As it goes up, we need to control it because we do not want it to go up and get sucked into the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the bleed valve to control that. As it starts to go up, if it goes up a bit too high, we reduce the vacuum pressure by opening up the bleed valve a little bit more, and then eventually it will die down and the bubbles will start to come out, it'll be controlled, then we can fully close the valve and wait until all the bubbles stop. Now this can take a long time. This can take many hours. All the instructions are in the booklet. You want to wait until there's no more bubbles coming out of the wood. And once it is, you know that all the air's done. The more you do this, the better the results. So, let's get the pump on and let's see what happens. So the pump's on, just closing the valve. Okay, so we've got vacuum now and the bubbles are starting to rise. As I said, if it starts to rise too much, just open up the bleed valve and you can see it all drop back down again. So now all we need to do is leave this until the air bubbles are finished. So this has been going for about 24 hours now and pretty much all the air has been removed. What we need to do now is switch off the pump. But before we do that, we need to make sure we equalize the pressure in here. You don't want to turn your pump off while it's still under vacuum. So we'll open up the valve slowly and we can watch as the pressure starts to increase. So now that we're back to normal pressure, the pump has been turned off. You may find that there's some what appears to be smoke coming out of the pump um, and you probably saw it with mine then when you're releasing the pressure, this is perfectly normal. So now what we can do, and um, just to prove that it is now longer under vacuum, the lid comes off really easily. What we need to do now is we need to leave that in the resin. We need to leave the wood to soak in the resin. And what's going to happen is it's going to absorb the resin back up through all the pores where we've just removed all the air. It's advised to leave it for at least twice as long as it's been under vacuum. So this has been under vacuum for 24 hours. That means I need to leave it for a minimum of 48 hours. I like to leave it a little longer. It doesn't hurt to leave it any longer. The resin won't evaporate. There's no issue we have to worry about there. We just need to leave it covered um, just to kind of prevent anything from getting in there. But I'll leave that probably for three or four days. And once I've done that, I'll come back and show you the next step. So it's a few days later and we're ready to take the wood out of the cactus juice. So obviously we're disconnected from the, the vacuum, so there's no problem there. I've also got my toaster oven on, um, it's set at 100 degrees centigrade. Really, you want it around 90, 90, 93. Mine only goes down to 100, so I have to be a little bit careful. It's warmed up. I've also got a jug and I've got a rubber spatula. Now these are all optional things, um, but they're things that I find make this next step a little easier. Also some paper towel to collect the drips and some regular kitchen foil. So let's take it out. Oh. Also gloves, you're going to be putting your hand in now and you don't want to be getting this stuff on your skin. So let's take the lid off, put that to one side. And we can take out, take this out as well and put that straight into the jug. And then the jug can then just collect any of the residue of the, of the resin. And of course we can save that for later. Let's take our blank. There it is. And you can see we've got resin dripping everywhere. So I'm just going to put it straight into here. Now all the resin that was left in that uh, in the stabilising chamber, we can use. What we'll do later is just get a funnel and a jug and put it all back into the original container, put the lid back on and store it for future use. We can do the same with all the drips that are left from here as well. 
So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to try and clean this off a little bit with my finger to start with. Just trying to brush any of the excess resin from it. And then I like to use this spatula just because it's got a bit more grip to it than my finger and gets in there a little bit more. It doesn't matter if there's uh, cactus juice on the outside, it will just cure and we just turn it away anyway. Again, I like to just give it a quick rub with the, uh, with the kitchen towel just to get rid of any excess off the outside that we can't get off with our hands and the spatula. Now I can take a section of the, uh, of the foil and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it up. Now this step is optional. Um, all it will happen is that as this heats up and the resin starts to cure, some of the resin will leak out. And all this does is just collect it in the foil, so rather than causing a mess in our toaster oven. So it's time to put it in the oven. So I've turned my oven on now for an hour. Um, a blank that size, that's probably all it will take. So I'll come back then and we'll take it out and see what it looks like. Okay. So that's been in there about an hour now. Right, let's turn it off. I'm gonna take the blank out. Now, of course, this is gonna be hot. Um, perhaps not as hot as your oven at home in your kitchen, but it's still gonna be hot. So I've got my tool here for removing the oven tray. Right. Just pull that out. Now, so take that out. It will still be hot, but what we want to do is we wanna make sure that the resin's cured. So I'm gonna carefully open up the foil as best as I can. And what you want to look for is if there's any surface resin that's still wet. Right, nope. and that's completely cured. So that's fantastic. I can take that out of the foil completely now. And there we have our completed stabilized blank, ready for turning into a pen or doing anything else that we might choose. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon for some more great videos. Mm -hmm.